Hello, my name is Josh Beck. I'm a technology teacher in San Antonio, Texas. Work for a program called IMAC, which stands for Interactive Media Applications at Kruger Middle School. We are uh, within the Northeast Independent School District. This is the uh, seventh lesson in our series on the Blender. It's designed for my seventh grade class. However, if you're new to the Blender or you just want to learn it, uh, it's full of tips, and uh, I'll be creating a lot more of these, so you may want to pay attention to uh, this particular series. Uh, you never know what you might come across that uh, you might find helpful. Some of the comments that I've seen on YouTube um, at this point, um, I'm glad that um, it's helped some people out. So. All right, let's take a look at what we've got through Lesson 6. We've got seven spheres. Now, we went through and we colored them, okay? Real easy. We went through, we added basic colors. We created an empty object. We snapped it to the center. We animated our empty object, and then we created a parent-child relationship between the empty object and this model. The uh, resulting animation in Lesson 6 looks like this, okay? Our model basically just resizes. It goes up and down, okay? Basic, uh, all of them move together. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover two new concepts. We're going to talk about timeline extrapolation, and we're going to talk about layers. All right. We'll create another parent-child relationship, and there'll be a couple review concepts uh, along the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click. Uh, I'm going to select my center object. I'm going to click Shift S. I'm going to snap my cursor to selection, and that puts the cursor in the center of my model. Okay. Um, so down here in object mode, I've got my different layers. If you've uh, worked with Photoshop or the GIMP, uh, you know layering in, in digital photography is very important. You know you've got your different layers, um, and it allows you to work with different elements separately. It allows you to, you know, only look at one particular element while you're working on it, and then you can look at everything at once. Same principle applies with 3D animation. We want to work in this space, but it's cluttered right now. So I'm going to click here, and I'm just going to work with the second layer. Okay. Um, there's a way if I hold down shift I can look at two layers at once alright but we just want to work with the second layer and we want to block out everything we've done before that first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into top mode hitting 7 on the number pad Now I've got a top-down view I'm gonna choose add and I'm gonna choose make it empty alright um, so we've got my empty object here uh, one of the tools that we've got down here on the bar is the um, rotate manipulator okay I'm going to click that, and you can see that we've got a spherical object that appears. That uh, it, it gives us uh, some helper points that we can work with. All right, uh, and it allows us to rotate exactly on a specific axis. Excuse me, a specific axis. We have all the different axes um, outlined here: blue, red, and green. So I'm going to select the blue, and I'm going to um, just grab it. Actually, I'm going to lock first of all. I need to set this frame up. I'm going to choose I, and I'm going to insert rotation lock on this frame. Then I'm going to move to keyframe 30. All right. We're going to save some work this time. I'm going to grab the blue one and I'm going to slide it about 1 quarter of the way. Okay? And I'm going to hit I to insert keyframe and I'm going to choose ROT. I'm going to lock the rotation to keyframe 30. Now what we have with this empty is a 30 frame rotation animation where it just moves 1 quarter of the way around. I'm going to get rid of my um, rotator helper there. Um, let's just watch that basic animation once. Okay, I'm going to hit Alt A, and you can see it just moves one quarter of the way. That's it. All right. So up here at the top, we are in model mode. Um, the Blender, you can split windows and you can look at anything you want at once. You can really split this interface up, so you're working with several different viewpoints at one time. Um, they've got some presets set up that are pretty helpful. One of them that is uh, particularly helpful is the animation preset. <coughs> Excuse me, so I'm going to click on that. Um, okay, so what we've got here is we've got our model view on the left, and we've got our IPO curve um, editor on the right. Okay, so I'm going to select this on the right, and basically what this curve is, it's just a, it's a graph that plots the position of your object and the rotation of your object um, and the scale of your object um, in linear form. Okay. Um, so I'm going to select all my keyframes over here on the on the right by clicking A, and I'm going to come down and I'm going to click Curve, and I'm going to choose Extend Mode, and I'm going to go to Extrapolation. Now when I click this, watch what happens to the curve on the right. All right, it extrapolated the movement 
uh, that occurred between the two keyframes, and it extended it upward and beyond, actually, um, before the first keyframe. So uh, watch what happens. Here's the upshot. By extrapolating that motion, by doing that, um, let's go to keyframe one, and let's watch our animation. I'll zoom in on it. Here's the animation. It just went one quarter of the way a minute ago. Now it goes all the way around. It's not perfect. We've got a little hiccup right there at the top, but I'm willing to live with that right now. All right. So we've extrapolated a simple movement, and we've created a nice, simple rotation. Okay. Now, the y-axis is the one that's moving. So I'm going to take along the y-axis, and I'm going to move out, and I'm going to put the cursor. So it's approximately along the y-axis there. And I'm going to choose Add. And uh, let's go ahead and make a camera. All right. Now. I'm going to come around. I need to get the camera pointed at our empty. Let's go ahead and rotate. That's not the one. How about Y? That's not it. Well, it's going to have to be X. All right. Now I'm going to spin it around. Okay, so now I've got my camera pointed at my empty. Empty right now. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold. Um, okay, so the camera is pointed at the empty. Now I'm just going to create a parent relationship. Actually, it's still too close. I'm going to move it back just a little bit. And we're okay. All right, now we're going to create a parent-child relationship. I'm going to right the shift, right-click, and remember the active object is the one that's brighter pink. So my center object, and I looked at these on the YouTube videos. You really can't see it too well. Um, the center object right now is the empty is brighter pink than the camera and I'm gonna click control P and you'll remember from lesson six control P creates a parent um, child relationship and now the camera is tied to the empty now watch what happens when I animate we get a nice even camera movement all the way around so all that work we did on lessons one through five creating animations and keyframes a lot of those cameras were pretty wobbly well, now we get a nice, even movement through um, an extrapolation of the empty at the center of our object. Now, we want to look at everything at once. So I'm going to come down to the layers. I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to select layers 1 and 2. Now, I've got my camera, and I've got my object. Now, let's look at what we've got. We've got an object in the middle that's scaling up and down, and we've got a camera that rotates around it. Okay, and by clipping my frames, I could take it back, uh, and I could find a specific frame at this point, and I could make the animation seamless so that we don't get this particular little hiccup um, at the end. All right, uh, so that's it. Let's look at it through the camera one time. All right, and that's the object of this particular lesson. So we worked with three concepts there, two concepts, excuse me, new ones. Um, we went up to animation up at the top. And we did an extrapolation of the IPO curve by choosing Curve, Extend Mode, Extrapolation. And uh, we also worked with layers. You can select different layers independently, or by holding down the Shift key, you can look at multiple layers, and that makes us that gives us the opportunity to work in the same space without necessarily having to deal with all the objects that exist on another layer. Okay, so that concludes Lesson 7. Uh, keep an eye out for uh, more Blender lessons. We'll be working with it uh, for a while in my class, and I'll be uh, publishing more here as I learn more about the program and as we work with it in class. So thank you for watching.